Gambit heads, when you think of the Rui Lopez in chess, what do you think of? Maybe theoretical, played out, even a little bit stale. I mean, to be honest, that's kind of my opinion of the one of the maybe the most common opening in chess. Begins e4, e5, knight f3, knight to c6, and in this position, white playing the most common move here, bishop to b5, which puts pressure on the knight, maybe some future ideas of taking the knight and grabbing this pawn. And this exact position, the reason I would never play it with either color is because it's been just studied to death. Every single move here, there's like 12 solid systems, and each of them branches into like four more moves and four more moves and four more moves. And the theory, you got to know like hundreds or even thousands of moves of theory here. It's just un 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 unbelievable how much this exact position has been studied over the history of chess and especially even in recent times. What innovation? What innovation? Why am I possibly showing this to you today? What new move could you, William, possibly say here? What what is it? What what is it going to be new? Queen h4, you're going to you're going to lose your queen. That's probably the only move that you have not seen in this position. A6, knight f6, knight d4, f5, bishop e7, bishop c5. You have seen them all. D6. But but you have not seen this. Get ready. Get ready. Buckle your seatbelts because I am going to propose to you something new, something crazy and something actually exciting in this position. And it is I am scrolling down here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12th. It is the 12th the most common move in this position, accounting for, sorry, what percent of games? Let's see there, 0.5% of games. Once in 200 times does some poor soul on Lee Chess play d5, and even then, they don't have the epic repertoire that I'm going to show to you today. d5, what are we doing? What are we doing? This pawn's hanging. It's hanging because of this pin. So our knight's going to be under pressure. Takes, what are we going to do? Take back and just get attacked over here? What are we doing with d5 opening this pin onto us? I am so, so excited to share with you all my all, 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 all my crazy innovations, all the great crazy tricks and traps in this position. And hint, e takes d5. We are actually not going to be playing queen takes d5. And so how are you going to save your knight? <laughs> Maybe we won't. <laughs> Um, and knight takes e5 is actually probably not even a good move, and I'm very, very excited to share that with you all right. Uh, okay, but why d5? Why d5? This is going to be crazy stuff, because so f5, you guys might know, is actually the Janish or the, or the Schleeman gambit. And the f5 is nice, because if e takes e5, f5 is actually a, a bad mistake, and now e4 here, and now this knight actually really kind of has to go back to g1. So this is already very, very bad for white if they just fall forward into this knight doesn't really have squares. But the issue with f5 is that white can either play a move like knight c3 or d3, just hold this pawn, and now you've played this kind of weakening move f5, and so it's not the best. It's not the best. But, but, why does that not apply here with d5? If white tries to just ignore all the craziness, ignore all the craziness, and just play something, something like d3, right? Which is probably what they should do against f5, right? You could play d3 here, and white is actually just better, and they've kind of ignored all, all the craziness, which is why I'm not a huge fan of f5. But d5, if, they, if white just plays d3, they're going to end up worse. All we need to do is take and take here. And it's always better when the d-file opens to be the one to capture. Because now your opponent has to play king takes, which is his awkward move. We just play the simple move bishop to d7. And as the arrows indicate, we finish our development. f6 fortifies this pawn. a6 will kick the bishop. And just, we'll say our opponent does something like this. We're going to castle, also making them move their king again. So black here is just a little bit better already, right out the gate, if white just plays something so simple like d3. Okay, what if they play knight c3? It's actually not very different. We actually continue advancing d4. Actually, I'm sorry, that is different. But <laughs> we hit this knight. If they play knight d5, most common move, we play now. This knight is kind of ventured into some trouble. And it's obviously, if we had this position, obviously we wouldn't be able to hit the knight. But here we play here d4. Knight jumps into the middle. And now if only we could attack that knight, it would actually be fresh out of squares. No, 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 because of the bishop. So it would be fresh out of squares. So all we need to do here is play a6, try and get that pawn over. So actually, bishop takes c6 is the most common move in this position, but it just loses the knight immediately. White can resign. They can play here bishop to a4. We now undo the pin with b5, bishop to b3. And now we simply play bishop to d6 because we want to hold this pawn. So let's say our opponent plays something like d3, most common move. We play knight to a5, and next move we threaten c6, trapping the knight. And white has to do some kind of awkward things to... To not lose this knight to hold a square right there. So d5, we just advanced d4. Okay, okay. But I'm sure knight c3 was not at the top of your list for 
what is the point of d5 and what if they just take all of our pawns and all of our pieces? Well, let's start. This demonstrates the ideas of d5 very nicely with this move bishop takes c6, which for whatever reason is the second most common move, and it's not a good one, because why is bishop takes c6 not a good move? Well, we, I mean, we're, we're recapturing, I'm not that crazy, but <laughs> we're recapturing, and it's just, this bishop could take c6 any time. If you have a pin on this knight, just put pressure on it. Put pressure on the pin piece, right? Why would, why would you ever take it and relieve us of that pin? Okay, anyway, but we have this position, let's look at it, most common move, e takes d5. And maybe now their opponent thinks that, okay, now we'll take back with the pawn and they'll grab this one. But we have this really nice in-between move. We just play e4, hitting the knight. Knight jumps into the middle. Knight d4 is actually not a good move. And this is already, I'm sure they expect c takes d5, after which, which luck is already better. But this is really underscoring the main ideas of this line. And what we want to do here is this great move, queen to g5. This, this is white's biggest problem of this line with d5. In a lot of lines, we're going to play queen g5, we're going to attack g2, and we're going to be posing serious problems. So if out of, if six out of 10 white players play castles, what's the point? We just stack g2, they castle, but the issue is bishop to h3, this pawn takes away queen to f3. Now we're taking advantage of the pin and we're threatening checkmate, of course. They play g3, and we're going to take this rook. Actually, we can even grab this pawn, hits the knight, hits the knight, knight moves, then we take the rook, and white can is verging on resigning again. So queen to g5, great move. White can play something like rook g1 or, or, or g3 to, to save it, but we just collect this pawn and black is just much, much better. So knight d4, not a good move. Knight e5 is actually just makes this problem even worse. We just play queen g5, hitting the knight and hitting the pawn. Remember this idea, hitting the knight, hitting the pawn there. Queen g5, great idea. And queen g5 works so well because white has just no development. They haven't made a move on this whole half of the board and that will be a theme that repeats itself again in this line. So so d4 they can play to um, attack the queen, attack the knight. We don't do en passant in spite of the temptation because our queen is hanging. We simply take g2, or here, bishop h3, and we're now just attacking everything. We're threatening to play queen takes f1. Play here like knight d2 takes. But yeah, I mean the issue here with queen g5 is just queen takes g2 is so strong and we're also attacking the knight in this position. So here queen g5 is a big, big idea in this line. So. What else can white do? They can play queen to e2. Better move. It actually holds the knight on the g5 square and creates this pin. All we need to do, though, is the simple c takes d5, and black here is already enjoying a pretty nice advantage. If white tries to chip away at this pin, we have the very nice move bishop to a6, pinning them back. So now our next move is just bishop e7, let's say here, and they need to solve the problem of this knight with all our bishops doing a great job. Let me break that pin. And white here most common move, knight d4, very not good move. It just kind of underscores how important it is to take your opponent out of theory, right? Like if your opponent was just in the Rui Lopez that they're comfortable with and just be rattling off moves, or rattling off all these ideas they've seen before, take them out of theory. It doesn't matter what Stockfish says, your opponent might not just, just might not know what they're doing. What are they doing? Moving this knight again, it's not even attacked right now. What was the point of queen e2? It's not even attacked right now, but knight d4, not a good move because now the knight will get attacked. Now the knight is in a spot we can attack it. And if I continue to follow the most common move train, we can continue to pound this knight. Bishop to c5, black imposes just an iron grip on the middle of the board and is not even down a pawn. And white has just no development here. So not a good option for white, not good option for white all around. And if she castles a move position like this, just bishop d d6. And as the arrows indicate, we can just play knight d7, which will attack the knight once we break the pin onto our king and castle our king, black is much better. So. I did have to cover that because it was very common. What if your opponent plays knight takes e5, which is almost as common? Well, I'm sure you know the answer. Ignoring all the pawns hanging in this part of the board, just queen g5, this is an important pawn. That's a really, really important pawn, and now we're hitting this knight. What to do, what to do? Well, most people you see here are playing knight takes c6, grabbing another pawn. In this position, we're down two, but it's about to end very poorly for them. Queen takes g2, hitting the rook, rook to f1, and now we can play the simple move D takes e4. Just grab this. Just grab this. Because if your opponent just does nothing here, knight c3, second most common, bishop to g4 is verging on trapping that queen. Also, great ideas include bishop to a6, bishop to h3, anything that uh, can win that rook with queen takes f1 next turn. Rook doesn't really have many squares to go to, so it's not the best situation. Anyway, queen e2 is the most common move here, and we can just play this move knight to e7. Knight to e7 actually breaks this pin and prepares for us to get our bishop out. And here, black is like winning this game 
they're not really even down any material, bishop to g4, bishop to h3 are coming. So this kind of introduces us to the biggest ideas of this line. And the best move here is actually knight, I'll cover this one briefly, the best move here is actually knight back to f3, queen takes g2 we play, rook to g1. That's the point of knight back to f3. When the knight got attacked, it can retreat back there, rook g1, now the knight can support the rook, we simply play queen to h3, they take pawn, we want to play to take c4 anyway. Kind of a crazy position, but here we play bishop to d6, and black just has such, such excellent development. And I can even underscore it, but after rook takes g7, the position's like minus 2 after even just h5. The, the advantage that black has in development here is absolutely crazy. White has just nowhere. Whenever you take g2, white will have nowhere to put their king, right? Because they're like four removed from being able to castle along. And just h5 here, black can basically pre-move bishop to g4. I mean, bishop g4 is playable right now, attacking the knight a couple times, and now the knight is hit with the pin onto the queen, and so their opponent should give their rook, actually. But we just play h5 because they, white can do nothing to stop bishop to g4 in this position. They have to take it, and now h takes g4. This is even stronger with taking h2 and everything. So very, very strong stuff in this position after bishop to d6 here for black. Just take g2, just continue to develop, and eventually you're going to be able to castle, you're going to have your king safe, and your opponent is just not. That's basically the bottom line of queen g5, queen takes g2. So now that we know this very, very strong idea, now that we know this very, very strong idea, let's put it into play for this very dangerous looking move, knight takes e5, where we're already down a pawn, we're already down a pawn, our opponent's one move from castling, and they've got this pin, and it's a very dangerous pin that they're putting pressure on, because if we just ignore it, then they take it. I'm sure you guys have all seen this pattern before, but then, now that forks our king and our rook. In addition to us being down two pawns in this position, well, we're going to lose our rook. So, what do we do? Well, of course, we ignore all that. Queen g5, hitting the knight, hitting the pawn. If our opponent saves the pawn, we take the knight, and we're winning. So, what to do, what to do? Well, overwhelmingly most common, 1300 times, they took the knight anyway, and ignored this very big issue of queen takes g2. So, what to do, what to do? Rook is attacked. If they play rook to f1 in this position, then we can simply do this with all checks. Take, queen e2 must be played. How else do they get out of check? Queen e2, take. Bishop takes e2 would release the tension they have here. King takes e2. It looks like maybe white's winning. It looks like maybe white's winning, because we're up one pawn, but we are down a piece. They actually have all four pieces. We only have three of them. We only have three of them, and if we take our piece back, we're going to lose the rook. So what we must do, and bishop d7 here doesn't work either. It looks like it wins the knight, but knight d4 can defend the bishop. So what we must do is throw in this move a6. Opponent backs up, bishop a4. And now we just play bishop to d7, and now we are winning this knight. There was nothing they could do actually to save their piece. Knight to d4 check was another option to recapture over here. But this position is actually just much, much better for black. It's a bishop pair with just much better development and everything. So in this position, bishop a4, bishop to d7, and here, white, white, white can actually throw one more trick, knight c3, hitting this pawn. If you take it, they can take this one. Bishop can't take the knight because of this pin. Can't take the bishop because of this fork. So just make sure to take with the pawn here. And this is completely winning for black, just up a pawn, and a great development for absolutely nothing. So that's the line we follow if your opponent actually follows pretty much the most common moves. Knight takes e5, we just play queen g5. They eat this, we eat this, and we just keep taking all the stuff. And then just remember this a6 to throw in before bishop to d7. And if the bishop goes elsewhere, then you can just grab the knight. So really not too much trouble there. Really not too much trouble there. What can they do? What can they do? Well, instead of rook to f1, it is the most common move. Instead of rook to f1, they can play knight to e5 check, second most common. We play here c6. So now we're threatening to win a rook or a bishop. And we are down a piece because they did grab this knight and then come away with check. But what they could do here, they have one more idea of playing knight to e5, and it's this move queen to f3. So they send the knight here, and they can actually, if they're fancy, they can even play, it makes no difference. They can play queen to f3 first, defending the rook. Queen takes f3, knight to e5 check, c6, makes no difference, as I said, and then they take. So this position, and actually what we can do now is we can take this, because although we're down a piece, we can grab a pawn there, and we're hitting these two pieces. Um, the best move here for white has actually been played only one time out of 20, and it was this move knight to d4. We just take this bishop, and just king over to d8, I believe, to not get forked on c7. And this endgame is very nice for black. Black is better in all endgames, pretty much, because just white has no development. Anytime black can get with even within one pawn of material in craziness, 
it's going to be good because black has the development, black has the openness, and white has not made a single move on the entire half of the board. This whole queen side, just, they just didn't have the time. They were busy taking stuff and we were busy striking with queen g5. So um, actually the most common move in this position is bishop takes c6, which is even worse. Takes knight d4. Here, simplest is just bishop to b7 because your next move can be castles long. So we defended the c6 pawn. Castles long, very nice way to just attack d4 and get all of your pieces in the game. And here black is just much, much better actually. And not white's not even up a single pawn anymore. So that's the issue with knight takes e5. That's the issue with knight takes e5. It looks so, so tempting. It looks like it's just gonna win, but queen g5, hitting g2, hitting e5, and white is in heaps of trouble unless, unless they find a very, very good move here. And that move is knight to f3. Knight to f3, a fantastic move, because if we take g2, if we take g2, they play this move rook g1, we play queen h3, and now they take d5. Knight to f3 supported rook g1, which changes everything. That changes everything. We don't have the bishop h3 hits. We didn't enforce rook f1. Rook g1 came with tempo. He takes b5. And actually here, we are just kind of losing. So knight to f3, this hidden move. So play this at your own risk. Knight to f3, this hidden move is played 8.7% of the time. And I would consider it kind of a refutation to this line. Although we have a better move than queen takes g2. And it's this move queen to e7, where we're just trying to grab our pawn back here by creating this pin. And now here, uh, 10 out of 16 white players have found this nice move e5, which holds the pawn with their own pin, the fact that we can't play knight to c5, play your bishop to d7. If here white actually plays this move d4, we can play this nice move knight to e5, hitting the bishop if they take our knight, and otherwise we can take back here. So we grab our pawn back. Black, white here, however, should play this move castles, because if we take, then basically we've run into rook e1 problems, such as this position, or to e1, our queen and king are on the same file there. They're castling quick. So we should castle as well. Again, d4, we have knight takes e5. Has a nice little trick to win our pawn back, but our opponent should play rook e1. After which, white is better. White is better because white is up a pawn. We can play this nice move g5, I like. Playing bishop g7, g4. All, all, all these nice ways to try and win the pawn back. But this is the refute, or an a6 we should play. But this is kind of a refutation. This is kind of a refutation. So play this line at your own risk. If your opponent finds knight to f3, you'll probably just be down a pawn after queen e7, although there are worse things. So that's the risk you run. I think they run greater risk in this line. I think the surprise value is there, but wanted to give you all the information there. However, we haven't even touched on the most common move, and I think it is Stockfish's top choice. I'll confirm that. Uh, this Stockfish like knight, knight, knight takes e5, but they're pretty close. e takes d5. e takes d5, and it looks like well, William, what are you recommending? If you take this pawn, just knight c3, white just develops with tempo, this defends the bishop, this hits the queen, you gotta move the queen again, and white is doing great after castles. However, however, let me introduce you to my little friend that I like to call a6. Chaos. Absolute chaos. This is hanging. This is hanging. This is hanging. This is hanging. Everything's hanging. Everything's hanging. And chaos is just what we love. So, so, what to do? Well, most of your opponents are going to be playing bishop takes knight, fury capture, and then they'll take this pawn. Very dangerous to give us a one tempo before you castle. Very dangerous. Here, we're going to play this move e4. And if they played knight e5, you guessed it, queen g5. Hit the knight, hit the pawn, and this is a disaster for white. If they play your d4 to save the knight and attack the queen, we simply take g2, rook f1, bishop to h3, hitting this rook. Knight to d2, most common move, and after bishop to d6, this is just so, so good for uh, for black here. White just has almost no moves, and the knight is defending the rook, but we're, what we're going to do is we're going to try and take this knight and take that knight, if that makes sense, so that we can take the rook on f1. But here, white just has nothing for, for is it just a disaster of a position on the king side. So knight e5 is not good because of queen to g5. What can they do? They can play this better move, queen to e2. And all we should do here is this nice move queen to e7. So we're actually going to break the pin. We're going to break the pin if they find queen d2. So now knight d4. And now what we should do here is actually this move queen to e5, hitting the knight. And so if they play knight to f3 back, then, then that would actually be a draw. But most of your opponents will not be doing that. And, well, there's only four games here. But c3 and knight to b3. And in this position, all we're going to do is just kind of claim some compensation with bishop to d6. And so I'd actually like to show this game that a grandmaster lost in this position. Stockfish loves this for white. It says plus one and it says that white is just up a pawn. But here's a game actually that, uh, oops, 
that a grandmaster lost in this position. I, I'll, 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 I'll link it below. But it is with this line, a6, grandmaster took it all, was playing white here against GM Benioli, against Trickster. We'll zoom in over there. There we go. This is a couple years ago. Knight b3. I think this is a very informative game because the point here is what we're going to do is bishop to d6 is your next move. And the issue with that is that this pawn is really tying down the white position. They can't castle because the queen takes h2 now with the bishop over here. And white is now having a really, really hard time developing. They could play this move d3 or d4, but after takes d3, all this will trade off in knight to e7 and black will collect that pawn back and we're doing fine in the end game. I think their pawn deficit will be shrunk to one with a nice bishop pair and with all these great, great files. In the game here, knight c3, bishop to f5. Now d3 is not really on the table. There's too much pressure there for white to be able to move that d pawn. So they play g3 just in an effort to castle to not get made on h2. However, however, an attack is brewing here with bishop to g4. Black has an idea to shift the queen to h5 and maybe zigzag all the way in on these very, very weak light squares. White has pawns. White has all eight pawns on the board, but is playing without, like, all of these pieces is their issue. So queen to h5, queen shifts over. White gets a little greedy, grabs another pawn. Rook to e8, swinging another rook into the game. Their idea here, the issue is takes, takes, bishop f3. Queen to h3 would be lovely, but I think queen to h4 and white can hang on. So in the game here, rook to e8. Takes f6 check, takes, and here white must give their queen for these rooks because otherwise if they move their queen, this rook will be hanging on the other end. So they take, now white in theory here is up a ton of material. They have two rooks for the queen, which is already an extra point of material, and have five pawns over here to black's two. However, these are very, very serious threats and white is playing without these pieces. D3, they try to get the bishop in the game. Bishop to h3, a very, very nice move, threatening mate right away. In addition, they are also threatening this side, like let's say bishop d2, they are also threatening queen g2, even if the rook can cover this d1 square. So not, not a good situation, rook to e3, but the position was lost anyway, queen to d1 check, and white resigns instead of doing that. So great game, great game that I think underscores just the importance of having just a great development advantage, uh, even over pawns, and that, that was also following all my recommendations up to move 11. So... So, 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 that covers what happens if they play bishop takes c6 and take your pawn again. You just play e4. You just play e4 here. And white has another option here of taking the knight this way. Simply, all we need to do is play a takes b5. If they take b7, they can take even more, but just bishop takes b7 here. And again, our ideas are kind of similar. We want to play e4, and if they play knight takes e5... We could play bishop takes g2 and rook g1, but you guessed it. You guessed it. The move here, queen to g5. Hitting the knight, trying to play queen takes g2. Opponents play queen e2, and this move I love. I love, because it looks like maybe our king's in some danger, but we play castles long. We play castles long, because we have... <laughs> this is just, it's just crazy. Castles in this position, because we have this rook e8 idea, and we have queen takes g2 on the table. For example, if your opponent played rook g1 here, all we need to do is just work d8. They don't even have d4 because this bishop is actually hanging. Nobody defends it. And here white is losing. Knight takes f7 actually goes one very interesting game. Uh, and in this position, queen takes g2. I'm sorry, there's no game in, in this line. But knight to f6, I just thought this line was really, really fun. Knight takes, takes f7 was a family fork over here. We simply grab g2, play knight to f6. We can't save both rooks. Why save either? So rook to e8 is being threatened now because our knight defends that onto the queen and king. So they should take this rook. And after bishop to f3, this position is about minus 5. This position is about minus 5. All we're going to do, as you can see the arrow is doing, knight takes h2 is coming, which is going to threaten to take this rook. And a rook coming to e8 is just an absolute killer threat. There's almost nothing you can recommend here for white. They just don't have enough pieces to make problems for our king. And rook to e8 is converging on checkmate as best they can give their queen for it. So crazy 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 lines here uh white can also play castles but we're just going to play e4 hit them with that bishop d6 all these pieces coming out knight to f6 coming rook to a6 even another idea lots and lots of fun stuff in these positions if they play knight takes e5 here i simply recommend playing bishop to d6 odds are your opponent will capture on b7 at some moment and give you that fun stuff otherwise if they were like retreating their knight just play knight to e7 and until they're obligated to do something about this pawn 
And there's one more good move here that I think is maybe just the simplest way to deal with this line. And it's this move bishop to a4. Kind of just keeping the piece. So we just include these moves a6, bishop a4. And now if queen takes c5, white might just want to play an a c3. However, here, we just play this move queen to d6. And this is the last thing I'll show you in this line. This is the last thing I'll show you in this line, but it's very, very nice game uh, from, from this. So in ac3, we simply put our queen on d6. And what's the idea? How could we still be aggressive here? Well, it still has to do with castling long. We play here b5, bishop to b7, opponent plays rook to e1. What are you doing? Your king's in the middle. Nope. Running away with castles long. Are we crazy? We just played b5. Well, if they play a4, we simply abide by the push pass rule, not trying to trade pawns in an area where our own king is and we're going to launch an epic attack on the other side of the board. So, d3, we play here f5, a4, b4. This is a game between, I'll open this up. It's a game between a couple 2100s. Knight to a2, knight to f6, we simply bring out our pieces. And this move I love, knight to d4, allowing knight to f7. We played f5, we brought, took space, we brought out our pieces, knight to d4, opened up the bishop, allowing knight f7, forking all of our pieces, but we play your queen c6, threatening checkmate over here. So they play f3, they're like, what's the matter? I'm still forking a couple of rooks. No matter, bishop to c5, they played f3, now they have issues on this diagonal in addition to the other diagonal. King to h1, and now a beautiful, beautiful finish to this game. Knight takes f3, and white went all the way through this move. Takes f3, takes f3, takes f3, takes f3, check mate. Beautiful, beautiful stuff with all these diagonals, with excellent diagonal play in this position by black. Uh, bring their knight forward, opening this up, then using this other one for the bishop. So that's what we're going to do in this line if our opponent simply backs up with the bishop and doesn't engage in the craziness of taking on c6. We simply take d5, they play knight c3, queen d6, knight square. Defend z5 for a moment. We can't really be attacked there. Play bishop, put our bishop on b7 where it's excellent. Castles long and launch an attack on the king side of the board. So that about covers it. What are my final thoughts on d5? Well, there certainly are good lines that your opponent can play. However, they're very hard to find. Knight takes e5 as I made it on purpose in my recommendations to you. I think the ideas after knight takes e5 are pretty clear. Go queen g5, attack g2, attack e5. They play knight f3. That's a very good move because it allows rook to g1 in this position. So we need to go back queen to e7 to create this pin over here. Knight to, there is a very good move. If e takes c5, we play a6. Chaos ensues. In general, you're just trying to play e4. You're trying to play e4 because queen g5 is a good idea uh, in, in a lot of those lines as well. And other things we can punish as well. d3, knight c3. A lot of these nothing moves are not very good ones. White has more interesting ideas here like castles and d4. They weren't common enough for me to cover, but they're rough, uh, estimated at rough, rough equality. All right, guys, time for a name. Time for a name, the most important part. So this is called here, you can see by Leeches, it's called Spanish Counter Gambit. But when you search Spanish Counter Gambit, because uh, Rui Lopez, you know, you know, some of the main lines of the Rui Lopez are called the Spanish. When you search Spanish Counter Gambit, you kind of get sometimes this and sometimes some other things on Google. And I don't know why it's called a counter gambit also because there is no gambit that white played to get to this position. So I'm not sure that name is really correct. Uh, I'm open to name suggestions. I'm open to name suggestions. Maybe something after after the Spanish will be good, but, but it's certainly not a counter gambit. Spanish gambit doesn't seem specific enough. So I'm open to name suggestions by playing this crazy move, d5, taking your opponent immediately out of theory. Fun, fun stuff from the most... Maybe dry and theoretical openings in chess. Always room to innovate. Always, always room to innovate. All right, Gambit Chads, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you got this far in the video, I would really appreciate a subscribe and a like. And thank you so much. Have a great day.